OpenAI just released data showing GPT-5 went from 27% to 92% appropriateness in handling challenging mental health conversations after collaborating with 170 mental health experts. That's a 340% improvement in a model that over 1 million people per week use to discuss suicidal thoughts. Meanwhile, China's Minimax just launched M2 Agent, an AI that costs 8% of Claude's price while running twice as fast and can autonomously plan and execute complex tasks across multiple tools simultaneously. These aren't incremental updates. They represent fundamental shifts in AI safety, accessibility, truth, media, and how we interact with the physical world. Let's start with the most important development. OpenAI faced an uncomfortable reality. Over 1 million people per week discuss suicidal thoughts with ChatGPT. There was a documented case of a teenager receiving assistance from ChatGPT for suicide. Young users are developing what mental health experts call asocial behavior by treating AI as their primary relationship. One kid called ChatGPT his best friend. This forced OpenAI to collaborate with over 170 mental health professionals to completely overhaul how GPT-5 handles sensitive conversations. The results are staggering. Previous model performance in challenging mental health scenarios, 27% appropriateness. That means nearly three quarters of responses in difficult situations were unsuitable or potentially harmful. GPT-5 performance after the mental health overhaul, 92% appropriateness. That's a 340% improvement. Specific metrics tell the story. Self-harm and suicide scenarios improved from 77% to 91% appropriate responses. Reduction in inappropriate answers in mental health conversations, 65% fewer unsuitable answers in mental health conversations. Reduction in faulty or unwanted responses, 65-80% to 80 reduction overall. Here's what changed. The model can now recognize stress indicators and conversation patterns, provide calming responses that de-escalate rather than engage indefinitely, and most importantly, direct users to real-world support systems, crisis hotlines, licensed professionals, actual human help. The approach shifted from keep the user engaged to recognize when AI is not the appropriate solution and redirect to human support. This sets an industry-wide benchmark Metrics like emotional dependency were previously unmeasured. Now they're core safety considerations. Psychosocial safety is being integrated into product design alongside accuracy. OpenAI is explicitly stating, AI is not a substitute for therapy. The goal is to guide vulnerable users toward human support, not replace it. For users in crisis, this dramatically reduces the risk of AI responses reinforcing harmful patterns or providing dangerous guidance. The 91% appropriateness rate in suicide scenarios is still not 100%, which means there's room for catastrophic failures, but it's substantially safer than the 77% baseline. For the AI industry, this establishes safety standards that other companies will be pressured to match. If OpenAI is measuring emotional dependency and psychosocial risks, competitors like Anthropic, Google, and others need equivalent frameworks or face ethical criticism. The limitation. AI can now better recognize when it shouldn't help, but it's still not capable of providing actual therapeutic intervention. It's a triage system, not treatment. Within six months, we'll see industry-wide adoption of similar safety protocols. The companies that don't implement comparable measures will face regulatory pressure and potential liability issues. This becomes table stakes for conversational AI. The bigger question is whether these safety measures get undermined by open-source models that don't implement similar guardrails. Minimax, a China-based AI company, just launched M2, an AI agent specifically designed for autonomous task execution. It costs 8% of Claude 3.5 Sonnet's price, runs twice as fast, is open source, and can simultaneously operate a browser, Python, and command line to plan and complete complex multi-step tasks without human intervention. This is the democratization of AI agents. Traditional AI assistants, you prompt, they respond. Every step requires human direction. You're the one planning, breaking down tasks, managing execution. The AI is a tool. 
you operate. Cost. Claude 3.5 Sonnet pricing sets the benchmark for frontier models. High-quality AI has been expensive, accessible primarily to companies and power users. Minimax M2, you give a high-level goal, it creates a plan, breaks it into subtasks, selects and operates the necessary tools, browser for research, Python for data analysis, command line for system operations, executes each step, adapts when it hits obstacles, and delivers results. You're setting objectives, the AI is managing execution. It's a digital worker, not just a conversational assistant. Cost? 8% of Claude's price. That's a 92% cost reduction. If Claude costs $1, Minimax costs $0.08 cents for equivalent or better agent capabilities. Speed, twice as fast as Claude Sonnet for agent tasks. Documented capabilities include collecting and summarizing web data, writing and debugging code, preparing reports and presentations, analyzing user feedback, screening resumes for HR departments. These are knowledge work tasks being automated at a fraction of previous costs. Minimax's distribution strategy accelerates adoption. Open source model, available on Hugging Face, free trial period until November 7th, runs on personal computers with modest hardware, and they launched the Minimax Agent platform with a smaller model for simple tasks and a pro model for intensive work. The company's stated philosophy is AI for everyone, and the pricing backs that up. For individuals and small companies, this makes AI agents economically viable. Tasks that were too expensive to automate with Claude become feasible with Minimax at 8% of the cost. For Western AI companies, this is a competitive threat. China is now producing models that match or exceed Western capabilities at dramatically lower prices. The Western AI supremacy narrative gets challenged when Chinese models offer equivalent functionality for 92% less. For the job market, autonomous agents at this price point accelerate displacement of certain knowledge work roles. Data collection, basic coding, report generation, resume screening, these become economically efficient to fully automate. The caveat, open source means anyone can run this, including bad actors. There's no centralized safety control like with ChatGBT or Claude. I think we're entering the age of agents where AI shifts from conversational assistants to functional workers. Within a year, most knowledge workers will interact with AI agents that autonomously execute complex tasks rather than just answering questions. The cost democratization means smaller companies and individuals can afford agent-based automation, not just tech giants. Western companies will be forced to match these prizes or lose market share to Chinese alternatives. Elon Musk launched Grokopedia, an AI-powered encyclopedia built on the Grok model, positioned as a direct competitor to Wikipedia. Musk's stated motivation is that Wikipedia manipulates reality, and he signaled his intent on X with the statement, we will rewrite the truth. The platform leverages posts from X as part of its knowledge base. Wikipedia model, crowdsourced, human-edited, citation-required entries with transparent edit histories and community moderation. Imperfect, but the process is visible. Grokopedia model, AI-generated responses in a chatbot interface similar to ChatGPT. Users input queries, receive generated text. The platform claims to be less edited, and presents an alternative version of truth. Here's what's interesting from testing. An entry on Elon Musk cited 323 sources, including Britannica, The New York Times, and BBC. An entry on Mustafa Kemal Ataturk cited 170 sources. The volume of citations is extensive. The concern, despite citing credible sources, there's risk of invisible injection, subtle manipulation of the final text to fit a specific narrative while appearing well-sourced. This is analogous to prompt injection attacks, but at the knowledge base level. Current assessment. Crocopedia's output is functionally similar to detailed answers from Claude, Mistral, or Perplexity. It hasn't demonstrated a fundamental capability that would enable it to replace Wikipedia. The sourcing is comparable to what other frontier models provide. 
The Turkish history example reveals bias issues. An entry on Ataturk, central to Turkish history, had a significant lack of Turkish language sources. That's a red flag for comprehensiveness and perspective balance. For information seekers, this is essentially another AI chatbot with a Wikipedia-style framing. The value proposition isn't clear beyond ideological positioning. For the concept of truth, this raises questions about who controls knowledge bases and how AI-generated information can be manipulated without obvious editing trails. Wikipedia's transparency is a strength. Grokopedia's opacity is a vulnerability. Elon Musk's influence over the platform and its integration with Xdata creates clear conflict of interest concerns. Grokopedia will remain a niche tool used primarily by Musk's supporters rather than becoming a genuine Wikipedia alternative. Without transparent sourcing methodology and community verification, it lacks the trust mechanisms that make Wikipedia credible despite its flaws. I'd give it a year before adoption plateaus. Odyssey 2 is an AI model that generates real-time interactive video at 20 frames per second. This isn't pre-rendered content you explore, it's video that changes based on your live text commands while it's playing. Type, let the sun start to set, camera turn right, or waves should speed up, and the AI immediately regenerates the scene to match. You shift from viewer to director. Traditional AI video, you prompt, the model generates, you wait minutes for processing, you review the result, you iterate with new prompts. It's batch processing. Previous interactive models, you could explore a pre-generated world, navigate through existing content, but you couldn't change the world itself. Odyssey 2, each frame is generated instantly based on preceding frames and live user commands. The model runs at 20 frames per second, creating smooth video in real time. You're not just navigating, you're altering reality as it happens. The technical achievement, the model learned physics rules so it can realistically simulate waves, light, shadows, object movement. This creates a sense of a living world because it's responding to natural laws, not just generating random pixels. Applications span gaming, fully dynamic environments, film, directors can improvise scenes in real time, education, interactive historical simulations, walk through ancient Rome and alter the scenario, and advertising, personalized viewer-directed commercials. For content creation, this collapses production timelines. Concept to visual execution happens in real time rather than weeks of rendering and editing. For media consumption, we're moving toward hyper-personalization, where users don't just get algorithm-selected content, but can shape the content itself. Netflix could theoretically offer films where viewers alter the plot as it plays. The philosophical shift, passive viewing transforms into active direction. The audience becomes a participant in creation. The limitation, 20 FPS generation is impressive but requires significant computational resources. This isn't running on smartphones yet. Within two years, major streaming platforms will experiment with interactive content powered by technology like this. Gaming will adopt it first because gamers already expect dynamic environments. The bigger question is whether audiences actually want this level of control or if it creates decision fatigue. I think we'll see initial enthusiasm followed by settling into specific use cases rather than universal adoption. AI-integrated augmented reality glasses are moving from consumer novelty to enterprise necessity. Alibaba is launching Cork AI glasses for $660 with hands-free search, real-time translation, and integrated AI chatbot assistant. Meanwhile, Amazon is deploying AR glasses to transform its entire logistics and delivery operations. This represents the next hardware frontier after smartphones. Alibaba's Cork AI glasses are priced at $660, pre-order start October 24, deliveries in December, powered by Alibaba's QN AI model. Features include hands-free search, music playback, real-time language translation, and fully integrated AI chatbot assistant, comparable to Meta's Ray-Ban 2 glasses but with deeper AI integration. This is the consumer accessibility play, making AI assistance wearable and ambient rather than requiring you to pull out your phone. The value proposition is convenience and seamlessness. The challenge is whether consumers will adopt face-worn hardware outside of specific use cases like fitness or navigation.
Amazon's AR glasses for logistics represent a genuine paradigm shift in supply chain operations, not just a gadget. Current delivery workflow. Driver uses handheld device to scan packages, check routes, verify addresses, take proof of delivery photos. Constant switching between driving, navigating, device operation. Amazon AR glasses workflow. Glasses automatically activate when driver parks. Scan packages with a glance, no handheld device needed. Display walking routes in augmented reality overlaid on the real world. Automatically verify delivery addresses, warn of environmental hazards in real time. Automatically record photo or video proof of delivery. Future planned capabilities, detect incorrectly delivered packages before leaving the truck, perceive obstacles like pets or low-light conditions, provide real-time guidance to drivers through complex situations. This was announced alongside BlueJay, warehouse robot arm, and Iluna, AI warehouse system, as part of Amazon's complete AI-driven logistics infrastructure redesign. The strategic goal? Increase worker safety by keeping drivers' attention on surroundings rather than devices, boost efficiency by streamlining the entire delivery process, and build foundation for eventual full automation of the supply chain. For logistics and supply chain industries, this sets a new standard. Competitors will be forced to adopt similar technology or accept lower efficiency. For workers, this is double-edged, safer and more efficient in the short term, but clearly part of a path toward automation that reduces human workforce needs long term. I expect widespread deployment across Amazon's delivery network within 18 months, followed by rapid adoption by competitors like UPS and FedEx. Of the five developments we covered, OpenAI's mental health safety overhaul, Minimax's 8 cent agent, Grokopedia, Odyssey 2's interactive video, and AI AR glasses, the most important is OpenAI's safety work. When 1 million people per week discuss suicidal thoughts with AI, improving appropriateness from 27% to 92% literally saves lives. That matters more than cost reduction or entertainment innovations. Second most important, Minimax democratizing AI agents at 92% cost reduction. This changes who has access to autonomous AI capabilities and shifts the competitive landscape from West to global. Third, Amazon's logistics AR glasses because they're the first enterprise deployment that will drive industry-wide adoption and set the template for AR in professional environments. Speaking of AI safety, there's a controversial development in AI consciousness testing that's dividing researchers and raises questions about whether these safety measures even matter if we're creating actual conscious entities. I'm covering that next week. If this breakdown was valuable, hit that like button. Subscribe for weekly AI industry analysis. I'm dropping two to three videos every week covering developments that actually matter. Which breakthrough concerns or excites you most? Drop a comment with your take.